divisive politics, vile pundits, and Twitter trolls. My next guest says today's culture of contempt tries to pit American against American on a daily basis. But he says there is a way to avoid falling into that trap and live a better life. How? Love your enemies. And that is the title of the new book by Arthur Brooks. He writes, quote, what is the cure of our culture of contempt? It is not civility or tolerance, which are garbage standards. It is love for each other and our country. Love is the why of our leaders that can bring America back together and of all of us in our families and our communities. Back with me, Arthur Brooks. I'm not wearing it today, but I actually wear a love pin every day mm. to remind people it's a verb. You have to actually do it. Here's right. the criticism I get, though. When I, when, when I say on a regular basis, Let's just open our minds and hearts. Can't we get a little bit closer? People will respond to me and say, that's easy for you to say, you're a white woman. And you and I are two white people mm -hmm. having this conversation, and we do have the benefit of white privilege. And others will say, things are so unjust, you have to burn the house down in order to rebuild it. Right. So that's a, a profoundly, uh, 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 it's, it's an argument that actually doesn't hold any water because you can't persuade anybody under those circumstances. And you know, if you, you burn a house down, yeah, nobody yeah, has you know, anywhere you tell to live. Us, if, you're, if your <laughs> argument is, as I'm right and you're stupid and evil, there is nobody in America who will be persuaded by that. So this is a very impractical argument. It's also morally unjust. I mean, everybody watching us, every single person loves somebody with whom they disagree politically. And when, when somebody on your own side on Twitter or on, the, on, on, on cable television says the other side is stupid and evil, they're talking about your sister-in-law. They're talking about your dad. Don't put up with that. You shouldn't put up with that. In point of fact, 93% of Americans hate how divided we've become. One in six Americans have stopped talking to a family member or a close friend, which is a love crisis. It's a happiness crisis. We are actually having higher rates of depression and anxiety. We're having higher rates of stress because of politics. We need to take our country back from the outrage industrial complex. We need to take it back from the people that are, that are living on Twitter. We need to take it back from the screaming heads on television vision who are saying that just because I disagree with you, I hate you. We, we need to learn to, to di actually disagree better, not less, because I don't think we should agree. Ag agreement is mediocrity. So let's disagree. You know, if liberals want to be liberals, they want to go after conservatives, do it hammer and tongs. But in point of fact, if you can't take your conservative uncle and separate the person from the ideas, you'll never persuade him and you'll be unhappy. And that's not what the country wants. Any candidate who comes up with a 93% strategy and actually can effectively sell it to the American people is going to win and change the country. And all of us can do this revolution inside ourselves. How do you feel about social media? Because the criticism has been, well, they're trying to, you know, if we start to censor people, if they put up more barriers, then that's a left or right issue. And the president has said, no, you're trying to go after conservatives. But the point I've been trying to make is, how about just some basic standards, yeah. okay? You and I can disagree right now, right. but you don't have the benefit of saying, hey, Steph, go F yourself on TV, right. because we have some basic standards right. Of decency, yet on social media platforms, f off is a good morning. Yeah, for sure. You know, the FCC would have something to say about it if we started if started dropping dropping f bombs on on MSNBC for sure. But on social media, that's that's part and parcel of why people are going there. Social media stimulates the dopamine circuits, the neurotransmitter of the brain that gives you addiction. It's like smoking cigarettes, basically, is how Twitter and other parts of social media work. And and that's actually part of the business model, but it's deeply suboptimal. People are, are starting to figure out that that these social media platforms are siloing them, making them lonely because they're substituting for real human relationships. They're also basically, you know, turning themselves off from parts of the culture that they, they don't want to miss. It's making them miserable. People will not put up with something that makes them miserable forever. And that's an existential crisis. So rule number one is that everybody watching us should never be anonymous on social media ever, ever, ever. They should never interact with anybody who's anonymous on social media. And the platform should start actually requiring that people say who they really are. That would solve a ton of problems. Problems, and that would probably save these companies in the long run such that they'll continue to be viable and they'll complement our lives instead of substituting for our real lives, which is what they're currently doing. Well, the idea for these social media companies and for some people who are anonymous, they're saying, well, this is where we can have conversations. This is where we can share different thoughts. Mm. But 
If you try to say anything that goes outside what your profile is, you get annihilated, called something terrible. And my worry is it won't just silo us, it will silence us. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, now here's the crazy thing. If you go on Twitter, you'd think that this 93% statistic I gave you that hates all the divisions in this country, you'd think that's completely wrong. You'd think that 100% of Americans actually want a hot civil war. Then you delete the app and you actually get it out of your life for a little while and you're like, huh. Actually, people love each other. This country actually isn't so bad. Most so people love so each other. So what's going on? And the answer is that most people are actually most people are not on social media all the time. Most people are going to choir practice and soccer games and trying to get dinner on the table. And they, and they love people with whom they disagree politically. So let's live our lives. Let's not live it in this whole idea like the, I don't know, what, what's going to happen with the Mueller report? Let's look on Twitter all the time. That's not living. And, and furthermore, it makes you hate people that you consider to be your enemies. You're less happy than you could be. This book that we're talking about is a how-to guide on how to be a happier person through love. That doesn't mean agreeing. That doesn't mean we got to come together politically because we don't need to come together politically. We need competition politically. That's what we really need. But we can do that while loving each other more and being happier as people. And it just might save America. Disagreeing with someone you love can help make you smarter. I have to ask you about the DNC's decision to not work with Fox uh, and debate there. For me, I found it stunning. Yes, I know there is an enormous amount of misinformation spread. If you're watching uh, conservative media at night, it is a treacherous zone that I do think is spreading things that are absolutely untrue to the millions of loyal viewers that they have. But I saw Bill Maher talking about it the other night, and I thought he made great points that if the Democrats don't show up to the party, and there's, I mean, listen, you got Chris Wallace, you have a lot of really smart people over there. Are they cutting off their nose to spite their face a chance to speak to millions of people in America and say, L let me tell you what I'm about? It's a mistake. It's a mistake. You've got to go where you're not invited and say things that people don't expect. Look, if, if, you, if, if you really believe something strongly, a better, a better way for this country, go into mission territory. Missionaries are not out there already preaching to the converted. That's a very easy thing to do. But, you know, you've got to go basically show up on the porch where they say, oh, it's missionaries. I mean, it's like that's what you've got to do if you actually want to change somebody's point of view. And if you ever want to persuade somebody, you cannot do it with hatred. Nobody has ever been convinced by hatred. It has never happened in the history of humanity. You can only answer the contempt of others with love if you actually expect people to listen to you for the first time. But you can't ask people to silence their hatred or bury it. You do have to you do have to acknowledge it because sure. if we're simply saying enough with your hatred, time to love, no. you have to at least acknowledge. No, we feelings. need to disagree with each other. We need to disagree with each other's point of view. But in, in point of fact, you know, when somebody has a disagreement with me, I have to I have to separate that person's viewpoint from the person. If I can't do that, you know, look, I'm trying to get fired. People are trying to fire me up on social media and on, on in the media and politicians and on college campuses all the time saying somebody who has obnoxious points of view is a terrible person. Well, that's not not right. In point of fact, we're all very, we're, we're nuanced people. And if I'm going to make any progress with you, if I disagree with you, I have to say, I like Stephanie. I just don't like what she thinks. Let's work on what she thinks. And just starting from that standpoint, we can make progress. And everybody watching us can make progress. And they can be happier people to boot. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.